Jewish people. Regular German army and Waffen-SS units battled the Red Army on the front lines. Behind them, in conquered territory, other so-called special SS commando units fought their war of extermination. Initially, they rounded up men, especially Jewish men, and shot them. The slaughter was soon extended to include women and children, the beginning of the Holocaust. No written order has ever been found. But historian Peter Longerich thinks he may have worked out how the SS chief directed mass murder. Without leaving a paper trail linking him or his men to written orders. The SS killing units in the Soviet Union started first to kill men in military age, then all men, and then women and children. And in order to, to reconstruct how um, this order was passed on to the units, I think Himmler used a special system. He gave general signals, uh, rather vague orders, and then he waited whether his men had the intuition to understand what he wanted them to do. And after that, he traveled to the places and actually made clear that they understood his orders in a correct way. Although no written orders have been found, the numbers of victims were meticulously recorded. A system of vague, indirect orders and personal visits to enforce them meant Himmler was protecting himself and his murderous SS units. Despite operating within a dictatorship enforced by terror, he was still acting illegally in violation of German and international law. After Himmler's signals were passed down the chain of command and mass murder carried out, areas were declared free of Jews. He was actually uh, on unknown territory. Nobody actually knew uh, how it was like to kill uh, several hundred thousand people within, uh, within a couple of months through executions. And he also knows that, um, that he was actually acting illegally. Historians like Peter Longerich believe a similar system of signals and vague orders was also used by Hitler to trigger the mass murders of the Holocaust. Again, no specific order has been found, but in a speech in 1943, Himmler seemed to infer that he was entitled to kill men and their children. I have decided to find a really clear solution here too. I didn't find I was entitled to exterminate the men and allow the Avengers in the form of children to grow into adults. Himmler claimed that he felt he was entitled to extend uh, the killings to uh, women and children in the Soviet Union. He didn't say that he uh, got a direct order from Hitler, he said he was entitled. And I think that reflects the, the system Hitler used. Hitler gave so general orders, general signals, and waited uh, for one of his men to come forward with a radical solution. In this case, Heinrich Himmler stepped forward to orchestrate a radical solution the mass murder of men, women, and children. Himmler made a speech in which he made it quite clear that the SS and the security apparatus had taken upon itself the job of wiping out the Jewish people. And Himmler, in rather self-pitying terms, described this as being terribly hard and distressing work, but the SS were tough men and they had carried it out. Now, everybody who heard that speech must have known what he was referring to and must have known that this campaign of extermination could only have been authorized from the very highest level by Hitler himself. The campaign of extermination that spread across the East in the summer of 1941 was only the beginning. For Himmler, mass murder was simply a means of making his great Germanic Reich a reality. In his view, uh, the killing of the Jews in the Soviet Union was only the first step in a much, much larger, in a much, much uh, comprehensive program in order to uh, extinguish um, millions of people in the occupied territories of the Soviet Union. The Holocaust was only in a, the first step in a, in a, in a number of, uh, of genocides. At the end of 1941, Himmler was working on the so-called final solution of the Jewish question. Jewish men, women and children were to be transported from all German-occupied territories 
to the east. SS murder factories like Auschwitz lay at the end of the line. More than a million people were gassed and burned in this one camp alone. An estimated six million Jews were the victims of a racist mania, orchestrated and implemented by Heinrich Himmler. Many historians believe it was not the work of a crazed psychopath, but an ambitious and driven man, determined to carry out what he saw as a vital mission for his country. Heinrich Himmler was not a psychopath. He believed that he was a warrior in a racial war against the Jews and against Bolshevism. And he had to carry that war to its conclusion, ruthlessly, mercilessly. There was nothing pathological about this. On the contrary, there was a logic and a relentlessness about it. And it's that which makes it so frightening. But Himmler's war of extermination ended in a humiliating defeat as the Red Army closed in and his beloved Führer cowered deep underground in his Berlin bunker. It was there that a BBC German broadcast shocked Hitler. Hitler was enraged. He'd ordered his forces to fight to the last man and the last bullet. He saw Himmler's offer of surrender as the ultimate betrayal by his most loyal servant. The Greater German Reich had been strangled. Allied troops had advanced from the west. After the D-Day landing smashed through Hitler's Atlantic Wall in June 1944. The regular army, or Wehrmacht, and the Waffen-SS were fighting a losing battle on two fronts as the Russians advanced from the east. A month after the D-Day landings, the Schock von Stauffenberg bomb plot exploded at the heart of Hitler's command. The Führer survived the assassination attempt, but Himmler, his security chief, had failed. His SS and Gestapo agents hadn't contained the conspiracy. Or had Himmler known more, even allowed the plot to unfold? The next month, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill received a message from Himmler. The content is unknown. Churchill kept it to himself before destroying it. Did it contain a secret offer? Back in Germany, Himmler played the part of the die-hard patriot. As his SS forces were destroyed on the front lines, he enlisted civilians, old men and children, to mount a last-ditch defense. Hitler had ordered Himmler to marshal what was left of Germany's smashed armies to hold the Eastern Front. But again, the Reichsführer SS failed. By March 1945, the Red Army was only 60 kilometers from Berlin. Himmler was stripped of his command in the East. The SS chief retreated to the same exclusive Nazi sanatorium where his illegitimate son was born. The man who cheated on his wife also cheated on his Führer. Himmler had a visitor, the vice president of the Swedish Red Cross, Count Volker Bernadotte. Through him, he hoped to contact the Allies behind Hitler's back. The SS chief offered to allow some concentration camp inmates to emigrate to Scandinavia in return. Himmler, the architect of the Holocaust, believed he could succeed Hitler and have the Western Allies join him in a new war against the Soviet Union. Uh, Himmler had always a very pragmatic and very utilitarian attitude. 
and he thought, I think, uh, towards the end of the war, that he could use uh, inmates of uh, concentration camps uh, in order to start some sort of negotiations with the Allies. And I think that he probably thought that he could find uh, in a world after uh, the defeat of Germany a new role for himself, maybe something like a um, special commissioner for security in, in Europe, something like this. This is, of course, uh, completely absurd from our point of view, um, but um, one should not underestimate uh, Himmler's uh, ambition and Himmler's ability uh, to change roles. Himmler kept his negotiations secret from Hitler. His Führer demanded a fight to the death, not surrender. A month before he killed himself, Hitler personally decorated what was left of the defenders of the Reich, teenage members of the Hitler Youth. While the young, the elderly, and last exhausted troops were left to face the avenging fire of the Red Army, Heinrich Himmler fled westwards. Hitler held out in his bunker until the 22nd of April 1945, when he declared that the war was lost and he had no more orders to give. His SS chief took this as a signal and openly offered capitulation to the Western Allies. Was it treason, defying the oath etched on SS daggers, my honor is loyalty? Himmler and all who wore the SS death's head badge had sworn to be loyal to Hitler to the death. As far as Hitler was concerned, his SS chief had broken this solemn oath. Before he killed himself, he decreed, Before my death, I cast out the former Reichsführer SS and Minister of the Interior Heinrich Himmler from the Nazi party and all offices of the state. Himmler stepped in when he thought his Führer had relinquished command. Is it really a betrayal of Hitler? I think that he in this particular situation thought that Hitler was not able to act anymore and it was his duty, uh, his task to uh, take the initiative. Days after Himmler had offered surrender on his behalf, Adolf Hitler's dream of a thousand-year Reich ended in the bunker that became his tomb. Rather than face the Russians, the Führer killed himself. The SS chief had long fled Berlin. His attempts to negotiate a surrender with the Western Allies failed. The victors wanted nothing to do with him. The liberation of concentration camps like Buchenwald revealed the full horror of his crimes against humanity. Many of those who had carried out his cruel and murderous orders were arrested. But like many senior Nazis at the top of the chain of command, the SS chief fled into hiding. Stripped of his black uniform and his troop of terror, Heinrich Himmler was a wanted man. After a reported sighting of him at a police station in the port city of Lübeck, the trail went cold. He shaved off his trademark moustache. His wife, Marga, and daughter, Gudrun, were found in Italy. They claimed to have no idea where Himmler was. They would never see him again. Unrepentant, Gudrun Himmler followed her father in remaining faithful to the Nazi cause. After the war, she worked to protect SS veterans and war criminals in a shadowy organization dubbed Silent Help. But in May 1945, there was no help for her fugitive father. He wore an eye patch in a desperate bid to disguise himself. He carried a cyanide capsule as a last resort. Himmler was eventually captured on the run in northern Germany by British troops who had no idea who he really was. He had various options. He could have uh, committed a spectacular suicide. Uh, he could have uh, led a battalion of the SS to a last attack. Uh, he could make a, a last uh, statement uh, transmitted by all German radio stations or something like that. But instead of that, he simply tried to prolong his life for a couple of days. He tried to disappear in the masses of, of German soldiers who tried